Welcome. The software I'm demonstrating in this video will turn your classroom computer into an easy-to-use, student-run classroom bank. It's called Credit Bank and works on the PC or a Mac. It was designed by Rick Morris, who also created the credit card program. The bank will not only make credit cards much easier to do with your students, it will also enable you to take everything to a new and exciting level. Let's get started. The first thing I did was copy the proper folder to the Documents folder on my computer. Since I'm using a PC and Windows 7, I copied the Credit Bank PC folder to my Documents. Show that to you. Right there. Credit Bank Win. In the Credit Bank folder, you'll find the execution file. The execution file on the Mac version kind of looks like Monopoly Money. The PC version has a FileMaker Pro icon, this one right here. And that's the one we would double click to activate our Credit Bank. But before we do that, I want to show you a little shortcut to a shortcut. Right click on the Credit Bank application. Go down to Send To and then over to Desktop. Create a shortcut. This way you've created a shortcut on your desktop to take you to the Credit Bank anytime you want to without having to go to the document folder. Pretty easy. So let's double click on my newly created shortcut to Credit Bank and the program will launch after a brief splash screen that you'll see it'll take you straight into the login screen as you can see there are two login buttons the bank can be run by you or one of your students and although Rick feels it's best to have a student run the bank there are certain functions that only you as a teacher have availability to so let's start by logging in as the teacher and take a quick tour of some of the behind the scenes features. After that we'll return to the login screen and enter as the banker. So we will click on the large button label teacher and in the text box we'll type the password which by default is teacher. It doesn't matter whether you do it in caps or lowercase it's not case sensitive. So we'll hit OK and that'll take us to the main screen. On the main screen there are four visible buttons and two that are invisible. We'll look at the four bank function buttons later as the banker. For right now though we're going to click on the word President, one of the invisible buttons, and gain access to the settings screen. Although it looks a bit overwhelming at first, within a day or two it will become very familiar to you. The first thing we're going to do is adjust the minutes to timeout setting. Right now, the bank is set to automatically return to the login screen if it does not detect any activity for 60 seconds. This simple security feature will help to prevent students from accessing an unattended bank. But since we're going to be experimenting with the bank, we're going to change that to 5 minutes. Notice in my talking, it did that, one minute. So let's go back in as the teacher, log in, hit president, and change the one to a five. There we go. Next task is to change the titles on the main screen. So we're going to click on the bank name text box. If you click multiple times, it'll highlight the whole line. I have made some changes uh, to the specifics of my class, the bank name, the school name, the president, the vice president, I just changed to banker, changed the grade level to four. The starting balance is set at five and that means that when you create a new account for a student, five credits will automatically be deposited into their account. You can of course set this to any amount you wish and we'll leave it for five right now. 
Paying interest on the credits they have in their account is one of the real-life features of the credit bank and something students like a lot. The default setting is 10, 10%, but you can change that again if you wish. To make an interest payment, you just click on the green Make One Interest Payment button. A confirmation box will appear asking you to verify the payment. Right now, we're just going to click Cancel. Above the Interest button is a button that will allow you to make a deposit into every account automatically. Imagine that your class has just won the PTA Membership Contest. One nice way to share your appreciation would be to type some appropriate amount in the empty box and then click the Add button. I'm going to enter 15 and then click Add. After the bank makes the deposit, it will display the account balances screen. Each of the students in the sample class is now showing a 20 credits. The 5 they started with and the 15 that I just deposited. You may have noticed that there's no confirmation box like there was for the interest payment. I'll show you why. Let's click Done go back to the main screen and click President again. There's no need for a confirmation box because you can always undo a group deposit. For example, I can click negative 15 into the box and when I click Add that the 15 I just deposited has been taken off and the students are back to their five original credits. We can take a look at the transaction log by clicking on the blue View Transaction Log button. As the pop-up shows you, you can choose the entire log or just the entries of a specific date. Click All and the entire log will appear. As you can see, I have been playing a lot with this sample class. Adding students, taking students away, adding and subtracting credits, changing interest rates, it's been a lot of fun. And you too can play with that sample class until you get real comfortable with what you're doing. And you'll notice right at the top is the two transactions I just made. I added, increased by 15, and all the accounts were decreased by 15. If I want to clear out the log and get a fresh start, I just hit the clear button and you'll be asked to confirm this undoing action Confirm by clicking Clear and the entries will be removed. Let's go back to the Settings screen. Click on President. Above the blue Transaction Log button is a small one labeled Banker's Password. Click on it and a message box will display the Banker's Password. Right now it is set for the default setting, which is Banker. However, if your banker has changed the default password to something else but can't remember what the new password is, this little feature will prove to be very handy. Okay, a couple more items and we can then take a look at things from the banker's perspective. Sorting accounts. To the right of the banker's name is a box that allows you to determine how the student's accounts are sorted. The default setting, as you can see, is student number. If your students have been assigned a number, a strategy Rick describes in the New Management Handbook, you'll want to leave the setting the way it is. This is especially true if you're using a bonus sheet to record credits students are earning. I'll show you a sample of the bonus sheet later on when we get to the section on making deposits. The choice on how your bank sorts the accounts, that's totally your choice. Feel free to play around with the setting and see what works for you. The blue Import Accounts button is not something you'll need right now. It's described in the User's Guide and will also be the subject of the next instructional video. We're going to skip it for right now. Below the Import Accounts button are two pink zero buttons. One resets everyone's balance to zero and the other one resets everyone's interest payments to zero. If you choose to do this, reset the interest balance first. Otherwise, the bank will subtract the interest amounts from accounts that have zero balances 
which will result in each account displaying a negative balance. To fix that, you'll need to clear the account balances a second time. By clearing the interest amounts first, you'll save yourself a step. I want to show you the other invisible button before we do that. Before we do that, though, we're going to set the timeout value. Highlight the 5 and enter 1. Click Done. We're back to the main screen. If you want to change the teacher's password, we click on the words Vice President, the second invisible button. What appears is a dialog box that will enable you to change your password. Be careful about this as there's no easy way to retrieve it. And unlike the banker's password, there's no magic button for revealing your password you might want to write it down somewhere, keep it safe in case you have a lapse of memory. Maybe you could keep your password inside the sleeve of your bank CD.